Hey friends, I'm Mel and welcome to my kitchen. I love sharing quick and easy recipes here with you every week. It seems this fall I've been leaning into my crock pot more than ever to help me get a meal on the table every night. In the convenience of that hands-off cooking, you just can't beat it. Recently, I made three brand new to me slow cooker dinners and I can't wait to share them with you. They're the cozy, comforting casserole types that we all love. And I threw in a decadent, but crazy easy fall dessert for you too. So let's get started. Today we're doing some chicken in the crock pot. This recipe is called Cheesy Chicken. I have been waiting with bated breath to try this one. Number one, because this Swiss and Gruyere cheese, I love this. It is so good from Aldi. And I can't wait to try the Hawaiian sage and onion stuffing mix. I also found that at Aldi. So let's get going. Always first, spray this crock pot with some nonstick cooking spray. Now I have an entire kind of medium sized onion. I like to dice mine up pretty small. Even though it's going in the crock pot, you know it's gonna like cook down. But I just don't like big pieces of onion in like my chicken like that. I'm gonna lay our chicken breast in. Calls for four chicken breasts. This right here is one humongous one I've cut in half. Let me get the rest of it. Again, this was one chicken breast I cut in two. The recipe says to use some salt and garlic powder. I'm just gonna use my no-nos. It is salt, but it also has onion powder and garlic powder on it. In it. <laughs> and we're gonna give it some black pepper cracked on it too. The recipe says to put two slices of Swiss cheese over each piece of your chicken. But like I said, I had this shredded Swiss and Gruyere. This is really good. I've used it in something before, so I am going to use it. And it's cheesy chicken, so I'm going to be generous. I'm going to use the whole bag. That was two cups. This could definitely be a dump and go recipe. But I am taking the liberty and I'm going to go ahead and take my stick of melted butter and melt it into my stuffing before I put this in the crock pot. This ain't my first rodeo with using stuffing in the crock pot and I definitely like to do this step. I just like to make sure and get a little bit of moisture on this stuffing before it goes in. And again, I'm using this Hawaiian bread stuffing mix. Now we're just going to put this all over our cheese. If you just want to dump and go, just dump your stuffing mix in dry, then pour your stick of melted butter over it. It's already looking and smelling delicious. I'm going to take a can of Rotel tomatoes with diced green chilies. It did not say to drain these, so I'm not draining them. And I'm just going to kind of sprinkle these all over the top now. Spread them out a little bit. Share the love. Now I have a can of cream of mushroom soup and I'm just gonna spread it out over the top as well. And I'm sure if you don't have cream of mushroom, cream of chicken would work good, cream of celery, cream of onion. I would say any of those would be fine. This don't have to be perfect. It's in the crock pot. It's all gonna cook down and kinda get all mixed together in here anyway. And I've got a cup of chicken broth. I'm going to pour this over the top. When I was reading the original recipe in the notes, the recipe writer said that some people said this was a little too liquidy. So she's reduced it to one cup of chicken broth. I'm going to leave a fourth of it out. I don't want mine to be too liquidy. Let's pop our lid on. And that is a lot of goodness in there. So I'm going to cook mine on high. Probably take it about six hours. Like I said, that's a lot of happiness in there. You could cook it on low for probably eight to 10 hours. This is one of those meals that's really good to put on before you go to work. If you work an eight hour day or whatever in the office and you're gonna pick up kids and all that before you get home, this one will wait for you. This is a good one for a long day. Okay, let's see what we've got. This has been cooking on high for about six and a half hours. Boy, it is a lot of liquid, ain't it? My stuffing's disappeared. <laughs> I 
I don't know. I don't know where it went. But it smells delicious. Hmm. I don't know whether to have this with a salad. If you liked rice, it'd probably be good over rice because it's going to have a lot of liquid. Maybe some mashed potatoes. Maybe that. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to leave the lid off this. And I'm going to cut it down to low. We'll see if it thickens up any. And this one did thicken up nicely. This was really good. I was a little bit worried about it, but that chicken was tender and this was good. Let me explain a little bit more about how this stuffing and everything came out. Guys, I thought my stuffing disappeared. It didn't. The stuffing makes like a whole nother layer up here. Mine's kind of slid off with all that cheese, but it actually like it was so full on the top. I thought there might have been a chicken breast got stacked on top of another chicken breast. This is so flavorful. Totally not what I expected. My chicken's just falling apart. It's so tender. I was expecting like some kind of Tex-Mex taste. But this is so good. The stuffing, I can't tell necessarily a whole lot of difference with the Hawaiian bread flavor in it because it's got so much other stuff going on. But this is, mmm. It's so good. And it's total, total home style. This is a good one. A little bit of change up on my regular chicken and stuffing, but this one is so, so worth it. I mentioned earlier how the hands-off crock pot cooking has been a big help to me recently. Another big help has been having Good Chop delivered right to my door every month. Good Chop offers fully customizable boxes with your choice of over 50 high quality cuts of beef, chicken, seafood, and pork products. You choose what to receive online and it's delivered right to your door. This month, I'm trying some new seafood and cuts of meats that we haven't had from Good Chop before. And the quality is right on point with everything we've come to expect from Good Chop. And it's the good stuff. They only source beef that comes with no antibiotics or added hormones ever. And they offer a 100% money back guarantee. The steak tips that I cooked tonight were delicious and it was great to have them on hand just to toss them in my cast iron skillet with some potatoes and put together a yummy meal in no time at all. Besides the great quality, value, and convenience, one more thing I love about Good Chop is their commitment to supporting local family farms and independent ranchers here in the U.S. They source their meat and seafood exclusively from American farms and fisheries. If you want to enjoy high quality meat and seafood, take advantage of this great offer. Go to goodchop.com slash YouTube and use code MAMAMAIL120 or you can click the link in the description box below and you can get $120 off across your first four boxes today. For great taste and amazing quality, delivered right to your door, go to goodchop.com slash YouTube, use code MAMAMAIL120 or grab the link below and get $120 off across your first four boxes today. And thank you Good Chop for sponsoring today's video. Today we're making crock pot chicken and dumplings and I'm going to use canned biscuits for my dumplings. Believe it or not, I've never made them with that. I've only used gnocchi for chicken and dumplings. I really just don't normally attempt them because my mama Macaulay made the best chicken and dumplings and my mama, granny, she makes good ones. But we're gonna do it with some biscuits today. First things first, I get my crock pot leveling device. One of my little legs is missing that little nubby thing off the bottom, but that little cardboard makes it level. Gonna spray her down good with some nonstick spray. This is a six quart oval crock pot, by the way. I'm gonna start by putting my liquids in first. I'm gonna put in a 32 ounce carton of chicken broth. Takes a minute. Gonna put in one regular size can of cream of chicken soup. And I'm gonna put in a cup of diced onions and a cup of diced celery. 
You may notice that I'm not in my kitchen. I always notice when my favorite YouTubers are, well, that didn't come out right. That was presumptuous, I guess is the word. I might not be your favorite YouTuber, but you know what I mean. But the people that I watch all the time on YouTube that I normally watch, I can always tell when little things are out of place in their kitchens. You get used to it. But anyhow, what I'm saying is, you might notice I'm not in my kitchen. I am at my mom and papa's house. I'm at my in-laws. They're my mom and papa. My mom and daddy are granny and grandpa. They've been a little under the weather, and Papa needed a little bit of help, so I've been staying here a couple days, and uh, so far, I've worked him real hard. Papa's made me sausage and biscuits, and he made me pancakes this morning, <laughs> so I come and help anytime for that. Now, I'm going to put in some of the frozen chicken breast. I probably got, oh, four you know random size pieces in this bag I'm gonna put in here now for our seasonings I'm gonna put in a little bit of anti no nos you definitely want garlic powder in here and anti no nos it has salt but it also has garlic powder and onion powder so if you just wanted to put those things in on their own or use your favorite seasoning blend I also like a little bit of Italian seasoning in here because it's got oregano and basil in it and that just tastes real good with the chicken and dumpling type meal and i'm just going to put in a little bit of parsley and i'll probably sprinkle some of this on the top too when it's done i'm just going to stir that in just a little bit i'm going to put our lid on here and I'm going to cook mine on low for about four to six hours. Then we'll move on to the next step. And you know, if you're at Mama's house, everything comes in a butter bowl or um, a Cool Whip container. And believe it or not, I went home yesterday for a little bit and grabbed some more clothes and stuff. And I thought, I'm going to go ahead and take this stuff to do chicken and dumplings for me and Papa. I think, you know, we can share it with the other family members here on the corner too. But... Anyway, I thought I'm going to go ahead and prep some of this. I did have an old Hillshire Farm lunch meat container that I could bring my veggies in. It give me all the mammal vibes. When the chicken is good and done, you just want to shred it up. I just like to use my little meat chopping tool and do it right down in the crock pot, but you can feel free to bring it out of the crock pot and shred it however you want to. This is just easiest for me. I just chunk it up and then mix it all in. And I also put a cup of peas and carrots in here. These were frozen. I'm just stirring them in and gonna let them sit there while I'm working on the dumplings. And this is optional. You definitely don't have to do this, but I like it. And for the dumplings, you want to use about half a cup of flour. I'm actually using the Formula L biscuit mix because I love it. It makes wonderful biscuits and it has these little flakes of like butter shortening in it and it gives your biscuits the most wonderful flavor and I think the dumplings would be great with the same flavor. And I've just got it spread out on a plate and I'm taking one roll of Grand's refrigerated biscuit dough and I'm taking each biscuit and kind of pressing it down, flattening it, not completely. There ain't no need to pull out a rolling pin or nothing like that. Just use your hands and flatten it out right there in your flour or your biscuit mix or whatever you're using. And Granny told me that you always need to salt and pepper your dumplings. So I wanted to be sure and do that and kind of press that in. And then I'm just gonna cut them in long, thin strips and then I'll turn it around and cut it the other way as well. I like my chicken and dumplings to be more of a thick consistency and by putting the flour on your dumplings it helps them not to stick together but it also helps them to thicken up the broth. And I happen to remember that I had thrown in my really good pizza cutter and I just wanted to show you that is a whole lot quicker and easier way to cut your dumplings. I remembered I had that after, you know, I cut through a couple of them. I had thrown that in. Then you're just going to place them just individually right there on the top of your broth. That's a lot of dumplings, but you know, 
who don't love a dumpling, right? It'd be all right. Now we're just gonna take a spoon and we're not gonna stir this, but we do want to just mash these dumplings a little bit and make sure that they get under the water and the water, the broth. That sounds real appetizing, the water. <laughs> wanna push them under the broth and hopefully all this flour will thicken this up and man it smells good i wish you could smell it so i'm just kind of going to push them under there and i am going to go in with a little bit more black pepper because i forgot to pepper my broth there i'm going to put the lid back on it at this point we're going to turn it up on high and cook it about an hour an hour and a half and i'm probably going to come over here maybe 30 minutes in and give it a stir and then we'll see what it looks like at an hour and give it another stir. Just want to make sure our dumplings are done. Okay, it's been another 30 minutes. So this has been about an hour on high with the biscuits in here. Oh mercy, it smells good and it looks good pull one of these dumplings up here and see what it's looking like. Oh, that's good. I'm going to give them just a few more minutes in here on high, maybe 10 more minutes. It's just a little bit kind of doughy, but dumplings are doughy, you know? Friends, I am so proud of these dumplings. These things were perfect. They got nice and thick, just like I like them. This was such a warm treat, and I love the veggies in it. Patrick, he kind of got a little uh, sassy with me on that. He said, I made a chicken pot pie. He did not like the veggies in it, but you know, he's just kind of messing with me. But if you don't like them, don't put them in. But honey, these was the best chicken and dumplings. Good, thick, rich gravy, and the chicken and the dumplings were perfect. Today, we're making a crock pot tamale pie. Look at these ingredients. If you're a Tex-Mex lover like me, you're gonna love this. And honestly, who doesn't have a ground beef and probably all this stuff right here in your cabinet and fridge already? I always like to spray my crock pot first. Then I'm gonna put in a pound of ground beef and I drained most of the grease off this and then I added in a little salt and pepper a teaspoon of cumin, and about a half a teaspoon of chili powder. Next, it's totally dump and go. Got that can of black beans that we've rinsed and drained. One can of whole kernel sweet corn, I've drained it. Putting in one can of Rotel, the diced tomatoes with green chilies. This one we're not draining. It's just got a little bit in it, and we're gonna leave that juice. Then I've got a little can here of red enchilada sauce. These are like 10 ounce cans. Just, you know, the regular old can. And I've diced up these green onions. This was about three of them. Recipe calls for two, but I really like green onions. Now I'm just gonna give this a pretty good little mix here. And Papa, he really likes green onions too. He just likes to eat them raw. So I, I hope he'll like this. This might not be exactly his kind of meal, but he's got plenty of them chicken and dumplings left over from yesterday. Guys, I'm so proud of them things. I just, I'm so proud. But you know, I got to thinking, I don't remember my Mama Macaulay ever having like vegetables in hers, like the peas and carrots. I enjoyed that, but um, I don't know. I just, I don't remember. Tell me in the comments, how do you remember your mama or granny or whoever made you chicken and dumplings. How do you remember if they made them with veggies or is that something that we've just added here in the last little bit? Friends, that is all there is to this one for right now. This is a real easy one to put on before you go to work because it can cook on low for about six to eight hours. Then when you get home, we'll do, you know, the adding of the bread and the cheese and all that. But if you're one of them people who keeps ground beef already uh, browned up in the freezer. This one's just really quick to throw together in the mornings that away too. Now we're going to take one box of Jiffy Muffin Mix, cracking in two eggs, and I got a little bowl. <laughs> just mixing this up thoroughly. Wow, that looks and smells really, really good. 
We're just going to take our jiffy and I'm just going to like spoon it all over the top. And I'm using my six quart oval crock pot. And I'm just going to spread it out here to the best of my able to. It's alright if it's not perfect. It'll kind of puff up. I'm going to put the lid back on it and we're going to let it cook for one more hour just like this. It's been about an hour. We need to check that. Make sure it's done. I believe it is. I don't have a toothpick handy to check it. But I'm going to take this Fiesta Blend cheese and I'm just going to take, oh, about half of this bag. Should be about a cup. And I'm going to spread it all across the top of it. Now we're going to put this lid back on just long enough for that cheese to melt. This was my favorite of this whole video. I love the Tex-Mex vibe of it. Everything cooking low and slow all day long. It got so much flavor from the enchilada sauce and not even to mention the cheesy jiffy on the top. That is just a chef's kiss. This is wonderful to throw a bunch of green onions and salsa, whatever you like on a taco, throw it on here. But this was absolutely delicious. You're gonna love it. I thought while me and Papa was hanging out here, I'd make us this caramel pecan turtle pumpkin pie. I had the stuff to do this thing and I have been seeing this and just can't wait to get it made and tried. I'm gonna need me some chopped pecans, but all I had was these pecan halves. So I've got me some in a baggie and look at this thing I found at Mamaw's house. You always find the neatest stuff at Mamaw's. I'm just gonna meat mallet these into the pieces I want. The first thing I'm gonna do is take about a third a cup of caramel and just drizzle it all over the bottom of this pre-made graham cracker crust. I want all my edges covered properly. <laughs> now we're just gonna sprinkle some pecan pieces. Oh, I missed a few, that'd be all right. Sprinkle that all in the bottom here. Probably have about half a cup here and I'm gonna leave a little bit to put on the top. Looks good to me. Now we're gonna mix up our filling I'm using two small boxes of instant vanilla pudding. The recipe called for a 6.8 ounce box. There ain't no such animal, but these little ones are 3.4 ounces. I'm going to do a little bit of math, friends, so we're going to use two of them. We're going to pour in one cup of milk, putting in one can, not one can, one cup of pumpkin. This is just canned pumpkin, not pumpkin pie filling, but pure pumpkin. As far as spices go, I'm going to be using pumpkin pie spice. The recipe called for a teaspoon of cinnamon and a half a teaspoon of nutmeg. But you got cinnamon, nutmeg, and some other goodies in pumpkin pie spice. So I'm just going to measure out about yay much. Probably a good teaspoon. Let's just get all this mixed together now. I'm just going to use this whisk to do it with. I ain't dragging out a mixer, not even a hand mixer. This is good. Now it says to put in about a cup and a half of your Cool Whip. So I've just got me a half a cup measurer here. I'm pretty much eyeballing it. Just want enough left over to kind of be able to decorate the top of your pie with. Now I'm just kind of going to mix this Cool Whip in, really just folding it gently. You know these pies that you put Cool Whip in, you want it to make it really light and airy and fluffy. And this one is just so, so easy. I believe I've got mine pretty well mixed together. We're gonna put it in our pie shell with our caramel and our nuts. Get this all spread out in here. I'm beginning to think I might've used too much caramel. Really pretty pie, smells good. I tasted that feeling, it tastes good. I'm gonna put this in the fridge. It says an hour, but this is a heavy pie. I think it's gonna take a little bit longer than that to set up. 
Once this pie set up, I icinged it with the rest of the Cool Whip. Then I drizzled on just a little bit more caramel, tossed on the last little handful of the pecans, and we dug in. This pie was absolutely delicious. So light, so fluffy, but it had all the flavors of fall. This is one that is quick and easy. You definitely need this on your Thanksgiving table this year. Last week, I shared a video with five recipes for Thanksgiving, and they were all made in the crock pot. So if your life has been as crazy as mine, hopefully that one will give you some holiday help if you haven't seen it yet. And if you just love crock pot recipes in general, I have an entire playlist full of them. Don't forget to check the description box for that great offer from Good Chop if you're interested. And friends, as always, I appreciate you and the time you take out of your day to spend here with me. I never take that for granted. Until next week, I'm sending you love from my kitchen.